Hi, Jason here, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about how to wire a bonsai tree branch. All right, so I went out to the nursery and picked up a juniper. Uh, this is a juniper prostrata, um, a, very, a very good beginner tree. Uh, the foliage is um, it's very soft, so it doesn't hurt you as much when you, when you wire it. And also, uh, the branches are very flexible, so you can move them easily. And they're really, they're really easy to arrange. And they're great for, you know, leading up to if you're going to work on a shimpaku tree or a California juniper or anything else like that, this is a great tree to sort of lead you up to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a front on this tree uh, just so I, you know, don't waste my time wiring branches I don't need to. So what I've, what I've sort of chosen here is the front. Uh, this is sort of where you get the most, the widest nabari on the bottom and a nice sort of movement on the trunk right here and where at the top it leans toward you, so it sort of bows to you. Um, this is where I'm going to choose the, oops, sorry. This is where I'm going to choose the front. Um, unfortunately, I've got a branch here that's just right in the way, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that right now. I'll clean up in here a little bit. Okay, I propped it up on this um, sort of crate really quick just so you can see it a little bit more clear. But this is the branch I'm going to wire. From this angle, it's this branch right here is going to be my first branch. It's the lowest branch. Luckily, it's nice and thick. But the first thing I got to do is clean up the area around it, clean up all the inside branches and all the ones going down. That way, I can wire this branch a lot easier and it'll be much cleaner that way. All right, so let me do that really quick. Get rid of some of these branches I don't need. These inside ones I don't need because I'm going to end up arranging it anyways. So I won't need any of these really close ones. And now I'm going to go ahead and clean up all the ones going down. That's all the sort of needles that are going down. So if you look at this, say I'm isolating this one right here, hopefully you can see that. but um. You can see there's this one coming down, so I'll pluck that. So I'll clean up like that, making sure just keeping the ones that are going up. And then the ones that are going too far in, see if I can zoom up a little bit. Sorry, these ones right here, I'm gonna remove those too. All the ones going down. Okay, so let me clean up this tree. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me space to, to wire right in between right here. So for when you're working with the juniper, you'll want to do this <clears throat> first before you wire, because it'll make your you know the job of wiring a lot easier. And you'll be able to see the sort of shape much clearer. So make sure you clean up your trees first prior to wiring. So if you're looking at the needles here, some of these little small young ones here, this is sort of where all the old growth is. All the healthy growth is actually on the end, so you don't want to pinch these. Um, you don't want to pinch the tips. The older sort of way of doing it, um, the sort of classical way of designing a tree is that you would pinch these back uh, sort of to control growth. Um, but sort of the newer way <coughs> is to save the ones on the outside and remove the older growth that's inside because eventually if the light doesn't go through in here, these will all turn yellow anyways. So it's to remove all these and wiring all these secondary branches to create fullness in the, in the branch. So if you're sort of pinching the ends here, all the energy right now, you can kind of see how it's starting to grow. All that is going to, you're going to lose all that if you pinch it. So it's better to get rid of the old growth that's not going to do anything anyways on the inside and, and save that those outside needles. I mean, if you need to push it back, you know, if you need to push it back, instead of pinching the needles, you can always cut it back. So for example, on this one, um, actually I probably need that one, but um, I'll show you later after I wire this, we can always pu push it back just by cutting, cutting back. Uh, you never want to go straight across the needles. I mean, here's a little sample here. So for example, you never want to cut the needles across like this, just straight across. You always want to cut it back to where the new shoots appear. And that way, 
That way you won't get the yellowing on the needles and you'll get a nice clean cut. So, <clears throat> still a couple going down here that I gotta clean up. You know, once you clean it up, you'll kind of see that the, the growth is actually really, really healthy. You know, after you get rid of sort of the older growth on the inside, you'll notice that all those, all that, all those needles are very, very healthy, very, very green. And they'll continue to grow. Because you're not pinching the needles, these will continue to grow. And the, the branch will grow very healthy that way. Okay, so we've got a few inside ones here. Uh, but you know what, I'll save these two right here. Sorry, you can't see. But I'll save these two. Uh, when I arrange it, I'll eventually need the, to put these above it uh, to sort of cover this fishbone right here. And the fishbone is sort of when you have branches that are just going kind of straight across like that. Um, you kind of don't want that. Um, so these ones right here, these two, will eventually grow out and cover that section. Okay, I repositioned the tree a little bit. But if you take a look, you'll see that it's very clean in there. It's all cleaned up and you can kind of see the structure of the branch. You can see the structure of the branch. You don't have a lot of foliage that's going to get in the way when you wire this branch. So, Okay, one of the first things you got to do is um, you always got to do the primary branch first. So this is the primary branch. This is the trunk. This is the primary branch. That's the first branch that sort of comes off from the trunk. All these in here, right here, these are all the secondary branches that you'll have to wire later so that you can arrange this and make this pad look really nice. But the first thing you gotta do is wire the, the primary branch. Now if I'm going to, my, my tree is most likely going to be positioned like this at an angle, um, just sort of show off the movement. And that's sort of where the, the Nabari is the best right, right in there. Um, so you have to think about where you want that branch. Luckily, this first branch right here is already low enough that it's uh, in a good spot. I don't need to bring it down more, but it's likely I have to move it just a little bit in to kind of come toward you. It's kind of going too far back right now. Um, so I want to bring the whole thing in. Um, it's not much of a bend, so I won't need to apply raffia, but, but I'll still, you know, I'll still need to use a heavy gauge wire. So let's, let's wire this primary branch first, and then I'll show you how to do the secondaries. Okay, I yanked it out of the can just so you can see it a little bit better. Um, looks like this one's been a little bit neglected. Uh, the soil is kind of not at the top, so all these, these sort of surface roots are dying which isn't too good because in order to have a nice wide root base, you'll want to make sure all these roots survive so that it can get you know, wider and wider. And here's the bar right there. It's nice and wide so far, but probably when I put this back in the can, I'll fill up the soil so that the rest of these don't die. Okay, so I've got some six millimeter wire here. Um, it's a pretty thick branch, so I want to make sure I can move it. So I, need to, I had to make sure I chose a nice heavy gauge. Um, sort of when wiring, the general rule is to use a wire that's about a third the size of the branch. That's sort of the general rule. Um, but the most important thing I think to consider is um, make sure you use a wire that will let you move the branch where you want it to move. So you might have to go up in you know, a little bit more than one third on this branch if you need to move it further. Um, some branches are also you know, more rigid than others, so you might have to break that rule and go up. Um, the worst thing you can do is, is wire a branch with um, a lighter gauge wire only to finish it and then realize that you can't move the branch in the position that you need it uh, just because you, you didn't use a sort of high enough gauge on the wire. So think about where you want to put the branch prior to applying the wire and then choose the wire depending on that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the wire right now. I'm going to just do one, one wire for this branch and I'm going to anchor it to the trunk just like this. Now sometimes it's better to go up um, anchoring it on the top that way it won't get loose, as opposed to when you're kind of going down on this way. If you start from the bottom here, sorry, my arm's in the way. Um, if you start from here, sometimes it'll slip. So sometimes it's nice to come here and anchor it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you anchor it really well, get it really tight. Now, if you don't anchor it well, you run the chance of possibly breaking the branch when you try to bend it uh, into position. Also, you won't actually be able to, to apply the wire as easily. So get that nice and tight and then Hopefully I'm not in the way. And then you can move that wire right across the top of that branch. Now, the reason I'm putting that right there is because this is where I want the pressure to be. You want to apply that sort of 45 degree angle wire. Um, at a 45 degree angle, you want to apply that right over the spot where you want to put the pressure. So if I want to put the pressure down right there, I want to put the wire right there. So I'm going to put that there and put it across right there. 
and that's going to give me a nice secure connection. Now I want to bring this branch forward like this. So I'm going to put that, I'm going to hold that branch in a position while I wire it. So that way by the time I'm done wiring, I'll actually already be in that position. Sometimes if you wire the entire branch first and then try to move it, that wire will loosen up and actually just spring back to the original position. So make sure you bring that branch into the position that you want it prior to wiring. So I'm going to turn this a little bit to myself so I can get a little bit better angle. I'm going to hold that branch and then I'm going to apply the wire. Now if you've got some branches in the way, like here I've got you know a dead branch that's got nothing on there and it's just in the way of me wiring, go ahead and remove it. Um, that way you can get a little bit closer to the to the branch and make it a little bit tighter connection. Let me cut that one off. That was right in the way. Okay, so I remove that. Now I can hold this branch into position right there as I apply the wire and I'll stay right in that position. And then switch hands, move the branches out of the way, hold it in position. Try to go slow, go slow here so you can kind of catch this and try to get out of the way. And then hold it in the position and then apply the wire. Just like that. Now the thick wire you don't need to go all the way to the tip because I am going to use thinner wire or a lighter gauge on the smaller branches. Um, this is kind of overkill. Um, this is, so I'm going to cut the wire off. And this is where it's good to have sort of your monster wire cutter. Um, this, this guy right here, which isn't, it's good to have this monster wire cutter so you can just make that easy cut across the big thick wire and it's the thick wire and it's gonna be gone. Okay, so if I turn that toward you, I put that wire there, I can actually move it in position a little bit more because it did spring back a little bit. But just like that, you can move it toward you. Now it's coming, instead of just going straight out that way, it's coming a little bit more toward you. And this is where I'll wire the secondaries and we can arrange this branch into a pad. All right, we'll move this a little bit more. Okay, so I curved that in and I'm gonna wire all these secondaries right now and show you how to do that. So now I've got a nice strong connection. Um, if it's loose, if you don't wire this tightly and it's loose, that branch won't be able to come into position. It'll just spring right back. Also, if there's a gap in here, if you put a gap in between here and you don't get right flush across the branch, um, it's a, there's a good chance that you're going to break the branch there too. And also it's just going to spring right back. You won't actually be able to control it. Okay, let's wire these secondaries. Um, it's nice and cleaned up. Uh, typically, when you're doing the secondaries, you want to go from sort of the outside to the in. Um, you'll want to make sure you try not to cross this wire with your secondary wire. So I'm going to go ahead and get the lighter gauge wire really quick, and I'll come back and we can wire this one. Okay, here's a neat little trick uh, for determining what wire size to use. Now, like I said before, use you know something that's one third the size of the branch. But sometimes you can just go like this and use press the wire against the branch. So let me isolate this branch. So press the wire against this branch. This one, if it moves the branch, if the wire moves the branch, then your wire is most likely heavy enough. If, you know, vice versa, let me get a little, a smaller wire here. So here I've got, so here I've got like a 1.2. If I try to move this branch with the wire instead, the, the wire moves. So the, in, in this case, the wire is not strong enough to hold this branch into position. So that's an easy way of doing it. Um, if you're not exactly sure of which size to use, just do that little test on the branches, you know, press them against it. And that's a really quick way of determining whether or not it's strong enough. So over here, I've got one that isn't, you know, it's bending the, the, the wire just a little bit right there. So I'm going to want to go with a heavier gauge. In this case, I'm going to go with 1.8 and I'm probably going to use 1.8 on most of these branches just cause you know, look at that. 
Let's go hold it in position for sure. And I won't have to wire, worry about unwiring it and rewiring it. And then I can put all the, you know, all the branches in position. A popular misconception is that you use one wire per branch. Um, actually, that's not true. You want to use one wire and try to get two branches out of it. So in this case, I've got these two branches right here. These two right here that I'm holding with my fingers. And I'm going to wire these two together with one branch. And then I've got an extra one here that's kind of, if I isolate this section right here, I've got one, two, three large branches. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then I've got like a little one right here, but it's too young to wire. So I don't have to worry about this. So I got three branches. So I got basically one wire and we'll do two. And for the last one, I'll do a single. Okay. So I'm going to wire these two together. Those, we'll wire these two right here, these two together. And to cr not cross, I'm going to go underneath that one, the main, that sort of six millimeter wire that I just put on. And I'm going to make sure I try to leave enough space here on the end here to reach the end of this, this branch. And I'm just going to apply the wire. Now the first thing you want to do is always lock in, you know, right, right there. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe not. Let me try to bend it a little bit. Okay. So right here, I sort of applied the wire and I'm going to do this branch and this branch right here. So I made the connection right here and I'm going to anchor it in and then I'll tilt it again so you can see a little bit clearer. Once I wire it a little bit. Okay. And then when you go, you want to make sure you don't wire the foliage or the needles. So make sure you go around, around all the needles. And if you, you know, if you go 45 degree, you'll actually go in between everything because that's just how the, the needles sort of grow on a juniper. So that's kind of nice. Okay, and then close it off at the end. I'll show you a little bit closer and then you make the cut. And then for this branch, so let me tilt it in again. You can take a look. So let me get this branch out of the way. Okay, so you can kind of see right there, I wired this branch to this branch and I went 45 all the way and I made a, a loop here at the end here just to cut it, just so that this branch won't slip off the wire and I'll tilt that up. Now, let me finish wiring this branch. Okay, and then let me close it off. And cut it. Okay, so I've got these two branches wired right there. Uh, those two. And I used a thick enough gauge wire so I can actually move these into position wherever I want. Now, you'll, you'll notice it's a good connection because none of these things, you know, that the, the branch moves really easily and it's not getting loose where it, sort of where it combines with that, that branch right there where it joins. And you can move the branches wherever you want. You can tilt them up, move them around, and you get a better angle. Like this, probably a better angle. And then you can move them out, move them around, move them down, tilt them up, just like that. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to do these two together. These two branches right here, I'm going to do those together with the same size wire. Okay, so I'm going to go underneath. Um, typically, if you want to bring the branches down, you want to make that, sort of put that pressure on the top of the branch right there. So you want to start from underneath the branch and then coil it through. Hopefully you can see the, what I'm doing right there. Some of these branches are in the way of your view. Try to hold them down so you can see. I'll try to go slow too. Okay, so you just come around 45 degree angle. 45. Make sure there's a tight connection. Make sure you avoid all the foliage. Now if you have foliage that's in the way and it's going down, then get rid of it. You don't need it. Move the branches, out, move, move the foliage out of the way. And then when you get close to the end, you don't have to go all the way to the end because it's actually the, the foliage is rigid enough that it's going to stay. Um, just go ahead and close it like that. Close it with a little loop. 
make the cut. All right, let's do the other one here, making sure we get a nice strong connection right there. Wrap it around. Uh, another good tip is that when you're applying the wire, uh, put your finger underneath the wire when you're applying the wire on top, and then use your thumb on the top when you're bringing the wire from the bottom. And what that does is it provides support on the branch as you're wiring, so that way you don't you won't break the branch. Four of these branches are wired, and I can position them really easily and arrange them. Yeah, it's nice and looking, looking nice and controlled. So let me wire a few more here really quick, and then I'll show you. I wired these already, so I just need to wire this by itself. Um, since I don't have another one to anchor it to, I'm just going to wire that on its own. Uh, that's a smaller size wire, I mean a smaller branch, so I'm going to use a smaller size wire right here. And this one, to not cross, I'm going to go across the top of the wire right here so I don't cross the other, the other wire, and just apply it. And then I'm going to anchor it to that other branch. Okay, you can see right there, I'm making the connection right here, and I'm going along the flow of the other one. Now, I don't have to go all the way up on this one, I just need to anchor it, so I'm going to stop just two, two rounds, and I'm going to stop and cut it. Cut that one. Okay, so essentially this, this branch right here is actually anchored to this one, and this one has maybe uh, two wire, you know, two... Um, two rounds of wire on it, maybe just for just this part right here. But that's used to anchor this one. And now I can move that one into any position I need. Okay, if I turn that, you can kind of see this pad start to develop. These ones right here, I'll eventually put them over here to kind of fill in that, that pad layer. Okay, so let me wire a few more here. And I'll show you the whole thing after it's wired. I'll do this one really quick. Same thing, just go support the top, apply the bottom, support the bottom, apply the top, and just kind of keep on going that way. Move that way through the whole branch, and then you'll wire. Your wire will be nice and secure. Make that cut. some excess right here that I don't need. Okay, and then position this. See when you're when you put the right size wire on your branch, like this one right here, if you put the right size wire you'll be able to move that in any direction you need it to go. And it'll stay. You move it up, you move it down can move it to the side or any combination, any combination of either. <clears throat> okay, so now if I turn the tree and I just look at this one branch. Now I got one going down right here. Don't need that. And all the branches are wired and I can easily position everything. You know, here's a fish bone you can see right here. One, two, three, it's kind of like a fish bone right there. So I'll use these ones to cover that section. And you can arrange each one. These ones right here need to grow out a little bit, and that'll cover this section on the top. And as this whole pad grows, it'll start to fill in right here. Um, what you have to look at is sort of the future of the tree and how it's going to develop, and then design your tree based on that. So let me move these out of the way. Here's another angle at it, but you can see that's the whole. See if I can get it really close. 
that's the whole thing wired up. So that's how you wire a bonsai branch. Um, that's how you do the primaries, the secondaries, how you would sort of do the, um, uh, the thicker wire for the primary branch and sort of the smaller gauge wire for all the, the secondaries. And then that's how you can kind of create a pad like that. Um, as you can see, the rest of the tree needs still a lot of law, you know, a good amount of work. Um, so we'll just repeat the process as we go up. But for this video, I just want to sort of go over the basics of that. I'll probably do another video soon on doing an entire tree, a demonstration on an entire tree, um, where I'll work on the whole tree. I probably won't be able to get as in detail and show you the close-ups of exactly all the wiring. Uh, that's why I wanted to do this video first. Thanks for watching, and once again, please subscribe if you'd like to see some more, and give me a like if you think this was helpful.